So a few days ago, I posted this image online because I saw it and I was kind of charmed by it and I want to explain why that is and then I'm going to solve it for you. So I was charmed by this image because it belongs to a category of things that get posted every now and then, like every, I don't know, few months one of these seems to go around and usually these things actually drive me crazy. Um, I call them emoji math puzzles and I'm not the only person who calls them that. If you go to Google and you search for emoji math puzzles you'll see all these different variations on like you know smiley faces and flowers and fairies and all the rest and essentially it's just algebra right it's just symbols that are in place of numbers and then you have to solve something it's a system of simultaneous equations is what we would call it if we wanted to be fancy just as a sort of side note one of the funniest things is that if you go and search for emoji math puzzles um, you know there's Google and it auto completes what you what it thinks you're searching for and the only thing more popular than emoji math puzzles is emoji math puzzles with answers which I think it sort of is hilarious and it sort of gets to the bottom of why I want to show you the answer for this and I should have predicted this when I posted this in a bunch of different places there was well let's just say lots of confusion about what the answer should be. And it's true, there is some ambiguity built into the puzzle, which I don't like. Um, so I'm gonna show you um, different answers that are possible. Um, some answers are not possible, but I'm gonna show you the different alternatives and then I'm gonna try and make a case for why one of them is probably the true answer, the one that was intended by whoever created this puzzle. So. Let's have a look at it. Now, to start with, what I'm gonna do is, rather than see all this emoji here, um, I am going to be like a normal mathematician. I'm gonna replace all these symbols with much simpler symbols. Um, it takes me a long time to draw a beer emoji or a pizza emoji for that matter. So I'm gonna use some pronumerals, some letters. So instead of the beer icon, let's choose blue, that should be nice and clear. Instead of the B icon, I'm going to use the letter A. Uh, instead of the hamburger, I'm going to use the letter N. Instead of that ice cream you can see down the bottom, I'm going to use the letter X. And I'm not going to ascribe a letter to the pizza just yet. You'll see why in a few moments. So, what we're going to do is rather than write down the whole thing with these new pronumerals, I'm actually just going to step through the puzzle from the top down through the bottom because that's kind of the order that's logical and it actually makes it a bit easier for us. So let's start off by having a look at the first and the easiest line. If I were to write this with just letters, I would be using A plus A plus A and that would be equal to three. So before we get to the next line, I think most people are pretty happy to say, okay, well, there's three lots of a thing and that equals three. So I could write this as three A equals three. And most people are pretty content to say, okay, therefore A equals one. No surprises there. Everyone is on the same page. Let's take that value for A for the beer and let's put that into the next line. So there's a limit here. So if I write down the next line is limit I'm gonna write that hamburger as an N instead of a hamburger as N approaches infinity. And now I'm gonna write, you know, instead of B or A, I'm gonna use the number that I know A is equal to, which is one. So what I've got inside the brackets is one plus one over, there's a the hamburger, so that's, that's N, all to the power of N. And that apparently equals the pizza. Now, Here's the thing, and again, uh, there's some knowledge that is, is required here to be able to look at this and, and quickly solve it, um, as opposed to like doing it from first principles. This result here is actually kind of, among mathematicians, it's a famous result. Um, this, what you've got in here is kind of like a compound interest situation, right? Like you might be familiar with uh, P, uh, actually I'll write the A first, A equals P outside of one plus R, to the n. That's a compound interest formula and essentially what you're looking at here is kind of a variation on that. Now when you take um, n as it goes to infinity what you're essentially saying is um, this r here which is like your interest rate um, it's getting very very small. It's approaching zero because one over a very very large number is a very tiny number. So you're getting a very small amount of interest but then what's happening is um, the index up here n over here, that's going towards infinity. So even though you're getting a very tiny amount of interest, you're getting it a lot of times. So where this often comes up is if you were changing the compounding period of a compound interest loan. Um, if for example, 
you had an interest rate of, let's put some numbers in here. Um, let's go with say 5%. I'm even just gonna write 0.05. Let's suppose that was our interest rate. And then I asked you, well, what happens in a year? That would be our R and that would be our N. But as I increase the compounding period, like if I said, well, let's do this every month instead of once a year, you wouldn't get 5% interest every month, you would get 1 12th of that, but then the upshot is you get that interest applied 12 times. So that's why the index would become 12. And I could repeat this as many times as I like. If I wanted to say make the uh, compounding period every day, then I would say you would divide the interest by 365 and you would uh, change the index to 365. So the limit of this as n approaches infinity is this result up the top here. And it's a famous result. Um, you can go ahead actually, you can go ahead and try and put numbers into your calculator or in a spreadsheet, put in very large values of n, and very quickly you will find that if you put the same value in this denominator as you do in this index, the values converge really fast to this particular value, 2.71828 dot dot dot. There's an infinite number of decimal places off the end there. This is not just any number, it's a special number. This 2.718, etc., is equal to E. So this number here, sometimes called Euler's number, it's a number that's attached to exponential growth. This is the number which sort of makes the final line, the hardest part of this, uh, all click together. So you can see why I didn't ascribe a letter to the pizza. It gets a letter just by solving what its value is. I'm gonna call it E, that 2.718. Now let's have a look at the final line, which is an integral. Okay, so I'm gonna combine all the bits and pieces that I had from before. So I've got this integral from ln, so that's the natural log for anyone who hasn't met that before. And then there's the pizza, right? So um, that's, E, which I just worked out from the previous line, so I'm gonna write natural log of E. Um, and then, if you look closely, this is where the ambiguity sneaks in, okay? There's another natural log as the upper limit of your integral, but then, trap for young players, and this is part of what I hate about most of these kinds of puzzles, often the math is actually not the focus, it's just kind of looking closely, like you've got to have better eyesight than mathematical ability to solve these. That's not one beer emoji, that's two beer emoji. So what does this mean? Uh, and there's lots of different ways, like you can just interpret this however you like. Um, I've seen people trying to solve this and um, them saying, oh, well, um, one beer emoji, one beer emoji, it must be one times one, so that's equal to one. Two beer emoji is the same as one beer emoji, because if you're multiplying, you get the same value. Um, it's probably more natural to say, well, it's maybe one plus one, uh, so that would be two. And then still others I've seen, well, um, they would argue that because you've just got two beer emojis next to each other, I can't believe I'm having such an involved argument about beer emojis, but anyway, um, there's no operation between them. So it would just be um, those two numbers concatenated together, which be a one and a one. So maybe it should be an 11. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to proceed as if it were two. And I'm gonna make an argument for later on as to why that is probably uh, the nicest, neatest answer and the answer that was originally intended, but we will have a look at what results from the other two answers. 